Summer is quickly coming to an end, and with it comes the spooky season of fall. So we're all looking to add a few more stories to our reading list. Whether it's for those last few trips down to the beach, or you're looking for something to read once the weather begins to chill, then consider the award-winning first-person psychological horror thriller fiction Crazy Is As Crazy Does, The Life of a Serial Killer by John H. Muggett. Crazy Is As Crazy Does follows the story of a fictional protagonist, John Goodman, and is an amalgamation of human predation and darkness, carefully stitched together from the lives of multiple serial killers and mass murderers, inspired from real-life events and individuals. Crazy Is As Crazy Does begins in 1955 and follows John as he evolves from a timid and disoriented criminal into a powerful mastermind of deception and intimidation. The story takes readers into a journey through the 75-year-old life of a killer ending shortly after the capture of the Golden State Killer in 2018. But, like all unreliable narrators, readers are made to grapple with a very important question. Can they accurately separate fact from Goodman's twisted fiction? Readers quickly discover that the real horror unfolds in two. The murderous activities described by Goodman himself, and the twisted transformations of those around him, culminating in a shocking, high-stakes ending. Crazy Is As Crazy Does can be purchased physically via Amazon or your local Barnes & Nobles. A digital ebook version is also available via Amazon and is free for Kindle Unlimited readers. Check out Crazy Is As Crazy Does, The Life of a Serial Killer by John H. Mudgett, and deep dive into the world and mind of an experienced killer. Link is in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown podcast. If you're new here uh, and you're not aware of what we do or what we are, we are a paranormal podcast that pretty much touches base on all sorts of stories, uh, spooky or whatnot, and uh, lately we have been trying to focus a bit more on the region of the U.S. in which we are located in, that being out of Philadelphia and therefore the East Coast. So the next several episodes moving forwards, as well as what we're kind of focusing on at the moment, are spooky stories that come from this part of the world. Uh, if you are from this part of the, uh, this sort of region of the world, I hope you are aware of some of the stories. They're definitely very familiar if you're from certain states or certain areas, but if you're not, it's probably pretty foreign to you. Um, a few of them are pretty unique, and a few of them are not, as you probably will hear from this story. Uh, this story is definitely interesting, and today we are actually going to be talking about the road that inspired the horror movie, The Village, if you're not aware. The movie being directed and created by M. Night Shyamalan, so if you are interested in watching that movie and then listening to this episode, or listening to this episode and then watching the movie, feel free to both of them correspond with one another. So this road stretches for several miles across the woods in Chad's Ford, PA, located just north of the Delaware border. This is known as Cassett Road, and it also goes by another name. This is the name that we are going to be calling it throughout this today's episode, and it is what it's most popularly known as. And that is the Devil's Road. You may have heard of this location uh, if you are from the area, especially if you're kind of surrounding the Philly slash Wilmington areas, uh, especially when you're kind of young and growing up. You have definitely heard of this story, and you have definitely heard of people venturing down there to give it a try. So, Cassett Road, or the Devil's Road, is an incredibly narrow, and in some cases, only a single car's length type of road in this area. It's extremely creepy and uh, winds back and forth through the heavily wooded areas of the Brandywine Valley. But what makes this road all the more bizarre and overall creepy uh, is the strange phenomena involving the trees that line the edge of the road. The trees seemingly bend themselves away from the roadside, despite the fact that, with from everyone's best documentation, they have never been cut or altered or in any way, shape, or form adjusted by mankind in order to do this, and people are still rather confused as to why the trees do this on their own. This strange phenomena pretty much goes against the natural growth of trees and vegetation, 
which typically want to grow in order to follow the sunlight and get the most sun. However, these particular trees are doing the exact opposite. And as you begin to move further and further away from the location, uh, this strange phenomena begins to stop. So it is very much an isolated occurrence, and it continues to baffle people to this day. Before we get into some of the stories and rumors associated to the road, there is also one more thing that the Devil's Road is linked to. This is reportedly owned by a uh, regionally famous and wealthy family uh, of the area known as the DuPont family. And this is a mansion located out in the woods known simply as the Colt House. So the Colt House is a naturally uh, sort of... The name gives a lot of it away. So naturally, uh, the name Colt House means that it's going to be linked to a lot of creepy and probably not the most good people in the world um and that sort of ominousness definitely sticks with it to this day but the uh sort of nature i guess of the ceremonies or events that take place here it's very very vague we kind of know ish of things but we don't really have a lot of details so i'll talk about that now there are people who believe that some of the stories relating to the cult house surround, again, the DuPont family. They are, again, a rather well-known and wealthy family. I believe most of their stuff came about when, uh, I believe they got into, like, medical insurance and stuff like that. Um, they're definitely into that, uh, field. It's a lot of old money at this point. Um, but if you are from this area, you're definitely aware of it. I believe... I, don't, I forget if this is also part of the movie or not, uh, but I believe there is another movie kind of, like, linked to them <laughs> in a way. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly them or not, but that's definitely part of this history, too. But when it comes to the DuPont family and kind of some of the stories that they supposedly have when it comes to the cult house and this creepy mansion, one in particular involves the idea that because the DuPonts are a very wealthy and influential family, that they would oftentimes, and again, this is alleged, would oftentimes interbreed with one another in order to keep that wealth within the family name. Now, supposedly a lot of this sort of stuff happened in the house in which cousins would marry cousins, and the conception of further family members would supposedly take place. Uh, however, in this particular instance, there were a few cases, supposedly again in quotes, of inbred offspring uh, that came of these unions, and they had to deal with them. So an attachment to the uh, cult house is also a phenomenon known as the skull trees. And as the stories go, these particular trees are the ones in which the DuPont family would bury the corpses of the inbred children, and a sort of strange phenomenon would take place in which the trees that the infants or children were buried under would sort of take the shape of human skulls, and this is weirdly supported because the trees in the area there are a select few that had this phenomena and we will talk about them a bit more later on uh but the supposed backstory of how those trees got that way is because of this aspect of the cult house there are other common rumors that fall back to sort of the favorites when it comes to locations like this we talked about this with clinton road uh, pretty much any pretty much any backwoods type road that is not well lit, particularly ones in this area on the, on the east coast, uh, you'll notice this. There are sightings of satanic groups, cult activity, and of course the KKK as they would gather in these locations in the dead of night. Which I'm sure you're, again, very used to hearing this is kind of all over the place. Uh, However, in this particular instance, it is more so linked to the cult house itself, 
and some people believe that a lot of these satanic and religious uh, activities would take place there due to the windows actually being shaped in what people believe to have a sign of the cross. And in some instances, people see this as being an upside-down cross or an inverted crucifix. But one of the weirdest things for the cold house, and definitely something that is adding to the strangeness, and something that I personally have heard about when growing up here uh, in high school, people would talk about this thing uh, in particular, and that is the guardhouse that is supposedly attached to the cold house. This being a sort of garage, essentially, that's on the property. Now, again, this is something that I've heard about. This is something that a bunch of people have heard about. And it is more than likely what you are going to hear about when it comes to this road, aside from, like, the creepy trees. Uh, and this has to do with the event in which... When you visit this road, especially at, at late hours in the night, you are oftentimes followed, stalked, and sort of pursued out of the area by an unforeseen individual in, more often than not, either a black SUV or a red pickup truck. Uh, now, people have described there being a handful of these vehicles on the location, that they do not see anyone either, you know, manning them in the guardhouse, uh, in the area at all as they drive by. However, as they get a little bit of a distance going, they then actually spot someone behind them. Oftentimes, pretty much most of the accounts have it that the headlights of this vehicle are turned off, that they are not able to see who's driving the, the car or the truck behind them, they just see it in their, uh, their rear view mirror. Uh, a lot of accounts have them either trying to get them off the road. However, more often than not, they, they aren't very violent. They just kind of follow you. A lot of accounts have them going uh, several miles down this road until they get, you know, a safe distance or so away from the cult house. And then they'll notice that the SUV or the pickup truck will stop wait a second, turn around, and head right back down the Devil's Road back towards the mansion. Now, many people believe that this is either the work of, you know, the KKK or the cult itself. However, it's really not, dis like, it's not really known uh, why or who is actually causing this weird car rage type thing uh, that, that goes on. But oftentimes... There are other things that get reported on the road, especially when people are driving through. And again, these are also linked to those particular groups that occupy this road. One of the more common occurrences that happens here is animal uh, mutilations. Oftentimes, strangely enough, there are raccoons. They are found either gutted, hanging on the gates of the mansion, or simply piled in a stack altogether. People don't really know who's causing them. Again, people fall back to satanic groups, uh, cults, troubled youth, that sort of stuff. Furthermore, aside from being chased down by unknown trucks, uh, people have also witnessed or been described as being chased away by gatherings of odd individuals in the dead of night. Uh, while others sort of witness a large bonfire or gathering off in the distance, they also hear distant screaming as well as uh, lights being turned on in the mansion, even though at the moment it is unclear who, if anyone, currently lives there. So let's talk about the truth of this location. The truth of, again, uh, uh, I can't even speak right now. The truth of Kosick Road, otherwise known as the Devil's Road. There is really no solid records or evidence that exists, particularly in relation to the cult house, which oftentimes is the center of a lot of these stories, uh, as well as there being no photographic evidence of its existence. People claim to go there, uh, however, there isn't really any photos. Furthermore, the DuPont family, uh, there is no evidence of them owning a mansion, particularly on the road. 
However, they did own some land in the area, and that might be why the story kind of linked back to them. Now, as for the black SUVs or the red truck stories, um, again, because there is no physical cult house that we can find, the sort of guard's house or the garage, again, doesn't really have any evidence to support it. Um, however, the occurrence of cars actually chasing people down is noted. Uh, this is a phenomenon that occurs on the road. Oftentimes, people do believe that this might actually just be pranks being pulled by local youths and teenagers, uh, because oftentimes, those are the people who are making these stories. So it is completely possible that they had a friend or a classmate or someone already there in order to sort of perpetuate the scare of the people in the car with them as they're being chased. I personally know of one classmate, I believe, who went, this was back in like 2015, 2014 uh, time, she went with a few friends, they went around, I think, November, and they they said it was weird, I don't recall if they said they were chased or not, uh, but they went late at night, they saw the trees, all that sort of stuff, however, I don't recall that they were actually chased in their car. However, this, this sort of stuff does lead into something uh, momentarily, but just understand that the chasing of the cars is an actual event that does take place. The trees, again, the ones that bend are real. We don't know why they do it 100%, um, but it's not man-made. No one's forcing the trees to do it. The trees are just deciding not to grow towards the road, which is odd. However, uh, the trees in relation to the alleged cult house, otherwise known as the skull trees, they were there at one point, however, they were taken down due to frequent vandalization and graffiti. Uh, the sort of culmination of vandalization as well as the car chasing has actually led the local police and uh, town officials to remove the street sign that would actually say that you're on Cassart Road. As, and replace it with a no trespassing post. So technically, I don't believe it is against the law to use the road, but it's just kind of like a de deterrent for people. So honestly though, I don't know, so I wouldn't really risk it. Again, people who are being sort of chased by these cars, it's either, in some cases, it's probably even the cops trying to chase people down and have them pull over especially if they're out of their car and trespassing. But oftentimes people do link this to the pranksters, and uh, this is a way for the local officials to sort of simmer it down a little bit. But as for the skull trees, they actually are not done. So I said that the skull trees were torn down, and the stories have it that the DuPont family would bury their you know, deformed, uh, inbred children under the trees. But, <laughs> technically speaking, there are, or there was, uh, there were bodies <laughs> that were discovered under the skull trees in this area. In August of 1978, the bodies of James Johnston, uh, age 18, Dwayne Lincoln, age 17, and, uh, Wade... Uh, Samson, age 20, were discovered along uh, Cassatt Road. Uh, they were all shot and killed by the infamous uh, Johnston Gang. This was one of the more sort of notorious family-type gangs that operated in the area at that time. Uh, again, I believe they operated from like, I want to say like the 50s into the 80s, um, or around that time period, uh, roughly. Uh, but it's actually the murder and discovery of these three, like, young men that eventually led to the dismantling of the gang. Um, I, I don't recall who it was who actually killed the three of them and buried them, um, but I do believe that the head of the gang's son was flipped on the dad, and this was around the time of the bodies being discovered, uh, or caused them, I forget entirely. 
but that actually led to the gang being arrested and, and disbanded and broken apart and uh, losing the, the power. And that, I don't believe they were like a heavy, heavy gang, but they were very much into like grand theft, uh, burglaries, I think like very light narcotics. But again, this was like a gang in the 70s. However, again, like the, the discovery of these bodies led to the arrest and conviction of a lot of the members. Uh, and locals say that the bodies of the victims were found by the skull trees. The trees that for years and years and years people have been saying, like, bodies are buried here, children are buried here. Technically speaking, they were, at least at some point. It is, it should be noted too that it is after this point in time, again, the late 80s when these murders were discovered, uh, that the legend of the road, as well as the cult house itself, began popping up. Oftentimes you can't really find when these stories really start, but it is roughly in like the early 80s when horror stories and sort of rumors inspired by this true crime uh, began popping up in the local areas and eventually spread. Uh, like, I'm not too too close to this area but i have people again like in my high school that would drive down there people knew of this people very much knew of this this story it's it's very popular uh, especially during the autumn time for you to drive through and allegedly speaking to when we want to talk about ghosts um surprisingly enough you don't really hear any accounts of the ghosts of the supposed quote-unquote uh dupont children However, there are supposedly legends that the spirits of the three boys that were killed and buried underneath the skull trees do haunt the road. Um, so, and, and particularly, uh, they are believed to be the reason as to why the trees along the road uh, sort of bend and warp and just do not act like normal trees because perhaps they were the cause, the reason... I don't know, people say it's the ghosts that are doing it, but I I wouldn't be able to give you an explanation. There's no real accounts of witnessing the spirits or communicating with them uh, or any evidence of like EVPs or photos. If there are, I'll try to find them and post them on the Patreon. But otherwise, they're just kind of like an added flourish to the story. Uh, but Haunted or Not, uh, Cassard or The Devil's Road is probably one of the creepier stories uh, that you're going to hear. Particularly, either, it's definitely one of the creepier areas in the Delaware area, uh, slash like Chad's Ford PA area. Again, it's very, very close to the border. Uh, so if you are visiting, definitely do, uh, if you're able to. Again, be aware of your surroundings. Um, and just don't break the law. <laughs> like you're, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to drive down the road, even though they have the, the don't trespass signs. I couldn't find anything that says it's illegal to actually enter, but I don't believe they support you getting out and like going around. I believe that parts as you like travel further in are private property, so you just don't test your luck essentially. Um, and also, again, like it's a, almost a one-car road, so you can't really just pull over. And if you do, it's going to cause problems, especially if you're just parked with your lights off at like 2 a.m. But if you are in the area and you want to check out a very, very creepy location, maybe during the daytime when it's a lot safer, uh, definitely check out The Devil's Road. I will be posting some information about it over on the Patreon as well as on Instagram and Twitter. Again, all of that is Realm of Unknown if you want to go over and support it. Uh, but I will be posting some information there if you do want to check out the location. Again, I keep mentioning the Patreon. If you do want to support the podcast, if you guys did enjoy listening, that is, uh, we do have a Patreon that has a $1, 3 and $5 tier list for you to support monthly. You get behind-the-scenes uh, content, bonus episodes each month, news episodes, all sorts of goodies relating to particular uh, episode topics, as well as some art that I'm trying to get done at the moment, um, but just lots of goodies overall. Uh, otherwise, though, you can check us out over on social media. That is going to be Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all Realm of Unknown. 
but Instagram and, and Twitter are going to be the more active ones that you can find me on. Aside from that, if you have any uh, suggestions for stories or anything, please feel free to send us an email at the Gmail or <laughs> at Gmail at realm of unknown at gmail.com. If you enjoyed listening to the story, again, please feel free to support it. If you can't do it financially, I, I get it's a very hard time. Uh, but leaving a review really, really means a lot. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts that actually allows you to rank it. Spotify, I don't know why you don't, but just be you. But until then, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of the Realm of Unknown as we talked about the Devil's Road. We've talked about a lot of roads lately. I've, I've noticed that. I've definitely noticed that a lot. But I hope you guys join us next time. I have a few special goodies for local areas and local myths. So I hope to see you guys soon. And in the meantime, remember to stay spooky. Thank you.